We all know that firefighters eat great, and that is why we came back to the Catch Can Fire Department Test Kitchen. Yay, happy to be here. You have an awesome recipe, too, that you'd like to share. It's been in your family for a while, right? Yeah, it was uh, something that my mom used to make growing up, and then um, when I married my wife, I made sure that the recipe was passed on to her because it's her, and not you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, like I was, I was talking to you earlier, and I said that this was one of the one of the first times I ever made it myself. Was just a few. Uh, was last night just to make sure that I knew everything because I always had my wife do it, and I never hung out in the kitchen. I'm usually running around chasing the kids when she's she's in there cooking. But it's it's something that I've just always loved. Every time I go home, it's one of my the dishes that my mom always comes up and makes. Well, them. and you can tell that it's good comfort food because just looking at the ingredients, corn flakes, cream of chicken soup, potatoes, two different kinds because you have a choice, ribs, and we'll talk about those in a minute, mm -hmm. and then brown sugar, paprika, chili powder, red pepper, ground cumin, black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and then, of course, sour cream, green onions, and cheese. And this, that's it, and butter. Yeah. But it does require some prep time. So yeah. let's talk about the rub first because you were so kind to pre-make some of this awesome rub. I get to smell it. Ooh, that does smell good. Now you said it's a little spicy, right? Yeah, and I know that in the past, so what I what I usually do now is uh, depending on who's who's coming, because you know, sometimes with my kids, they like somewhat spicy, but not too much. Okay. So typically the rub is equal parts of each of these, which is about a tablespoon each. Okay, so let's just throw some of it together. Including salt, too, that we didn't, I didn't grab. Salt. There's some, we have plenty of salt up here, so we can just grab, no, that's not. Don't make the mistake of throwing the uh, baking powder oh, in yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sort of the powdered sugar. Now, you can make this ahead of time. How long could I keep that in my fridge? Uh, oh, I don't even keep it in the fridge, because all the, typically all your spices are out anyways. True. The only thing. So okay. I don't. I just keep it up on the shelf and whenever I need to use it, it's it's there and ready to go. Um, one thing that I, I do change is, again, like I said, it's normally equal parts, but I'll take and have the, uh, the cayenne, the chili powder, and the cumin. I'll have that off to the side and okay. then depending on who I'm going to make it for, kind of put less or more in it. And then also the salt, depending on how I'm doing the rub, if it's a big, um, like say it's a pork shoulder or something that I'm going to smoke, or if it's going to set, I, I'll let the have that more. Or excuse me, put the whole amount of salt in there. However, if it's going to be just ribs where there's not a lot to them, right. I'll probably put about half the amount of salt in oh, them. Oh, interesting. Just okay. so they don't. Just so you can them. use this because that was going to be my next question. You could use this rub on a variety of different meats, Absolutely, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Pork shoulder, beef shoulder, or beef brisket, anything. It's it's pretty much a, it's just a common dry rub. Okay. Cool. Use, Let's make so. some, and maybe Absolutely. we can do a variation or whatever. Yeah. So just like I said. Everything's, the, the original recipe is everything just one tablespoon, and then the only difference is, is the brown sugar's half a cup. Okay. So, but other than that, it's just, it's quick and easy. What, what are like some of the other things that you could put in this rub? Um, some people like, we have the paprika. Some people will use half sweet paprika and half smoked paprika. Oh, okay. Um, just to add that extra smokiness. Mm -hmm. uh, Sometimes even when I've made the ribs before, I'll throw a little bit of liquid smoke in the bottom of the foil pan that I'll make. Okay. Just to kind of, because, see the thing is with these ribs is, is uh, a true barbecue connoisseur will tell you that it's not barbecue unless it's cooked over smoke or a grill. So it's, it's barbecue flavored is what it is almost. Okay, and stuff. whatever. So not, as not, long as not, it tastes good, who yeah, cares? Yeah, and it's not, and it's not me because I just don't want to get in trouble by somebody watching me like, yeah, that's not barbecue, you're not barbecuing it. So. <laughs> What, what I've kind of done with the ribs is figured out a way that I can do it inside of the oven because sometimes you don't have the luxury of especially Standing here. outside when it's a raining sideways? Yeah, exactly. Or even working here. Right. I mean, because we may have to go on a call. Well, oven at 225 degrees. Now, not saying that I'm condoning leaving your oven on when you're gone, but at 200 degrees, it's probably 200, 250. You're probably safe to... Now, wait a second. Last time that we were here in the fire department test kitchen, I thought the deal was is when the alarm goes off, all of the appliances automatically shut off. Well, they do, but we just turn them back on. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> there's a switch over there, we turn them back on. The city right. safety officer makes we, a surprise appearance yeah. at the fire department on Monday morning. <laughs> yeah. No, we, uh, well, if, if we're cooking, we'll usually leave somebody back, because, especially like on uh, Thanksgiving and stuff, because right, right. we are, you know, again here during 
365 days a year. So this one is just going to be, of course, to uh, about half of this. See, now the interesting thing is, is I have some boneless rib. Could I use this on country ribs? Absolutely, yeah. So I've got some of those at my house, so I'll take this rub and I'll, I'll test. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then one thing you can even do with that is, um, my wife likes to boil the ribs in beer. Really? That's, yeah. Now that's, that's interesting. Yeah, she always has me boil them in beer. The, the country ribs, the bigger, the bigger ribs. Right. She'll have me boil in beer and uh, I've cook them. I've never heard that. I can't believe it. Yeah, and then so I don't. I mean, you can rub them, and then but with that, we usually just take them and then I'll throw a little bit of barbecue sauce and throw them on the grill right at the end. They're usually cooked in the. Fantastic. So it's just whatever your preference is, of course. So. So that's that with, and that's omitting the spice. So could you, with the pepper, um, could you use a lemon pepper if you wanted, or do you think that'd be yeah, good? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how it would taste. I'm not going to say you can't because there's probably. Let me grab a bowl. Just one more, one more thing I should have <laughs> grabbed. Sorry. Um, I definitely wouldn't say that you uh, you can't because it would add it would add a different dimension of flavor. That's for sure. So, um, I've never tried it. That's actually interesting. You know what it would probably, what it would work best on if you were going to do it would, uh, if you were going to use this rub on a chicken. Oh yeah. Okay. So, so then you would still have the spice and everything, but then you would put it on the chicken, and then you get the lemon flavor. Um, I've never really used lemon with pork, but like again, uh, like I said, not to say you can't. So. Oh my. Yeah, and that's that's kind of <laughs> why. the red pepper went in there. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's all equal parts except for the, uh, well, the salt, because I, typically it's equal parts. So chili powder, interesting. Uh -huh. Yeah, but depending on who you make it for. So then one of the things that you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I won't. Put I am it not a spicy person at all. <laughs> yeah. So and that's and that's I mean, neither are my kids. I just went. I just got back from Thailand a little bit ago and made some. Uh, oh really? Some, brought some curry back and made that. And typically, like the curry that you buy here isn't very spicy. We made that and the kids got peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because <laughs> I put it in half a packet and it was way too spicy for him. So I've learned to kind of tone down. I've always liked spicy. Right. Right. But so I've what were you doing in Thailand? So a really close friend of mine um, went over there on vacation and decided to, you know, decided to rent a mo motorcycle because getting around can be expensive with the, right, with the different right. taxis and everything. So the cheapest way to get around is you can pay the amount for a taxi or you can pretty much rent a moped for the entire time you're there, half the time. And uh, he lost control and went and fell and ran into a guardrail and <laughs> almost oh, lost no. his leg. So he had already been in the hospital for about 20 days and called me up and said, hey, I need somebody over here to just, because he's been in the hospital. Right, so, right. So he called me on a Saturday and I got up Sunday and called all the guys that I work with and was able to get coverage and was able to go over there and kind of help him out in the hospital. We got him out of the hospital and... Um, well, with your background, you would be incredibly helpful. <laughs> I tried to get it. I tried to go into the surgeries that he was going in. So um, he's back in the States now. But yeah, it was, it's a beautiful country though. And the people there are amazing. So. First time there? First time there, yeah. But I'll definitely go back. You know, I didn't get to see a lot because he was injured. So I saw a lot of hospital and hotel right, rooms. Right. But uh, okay, so, so you've got. Yeah, and so I'll just do a little bit and then. And then just do it to taste. Now, so. you were telling me uh, that there's actually, believe it or not, this is a little tiny bit of the ribs. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot to talk about. Yeah. Because you've got to you put that on there for how long? Uh, I do it overnight. Okay. So, so last night to make the ribs, what I did is I took and prepared the ribs, put the rub on, and put them in the fridge. Mm -hmm. And then I got up this morning and threw them in the oven. Okay. So, um, but one thing that I was... But what I wanted to show too is on the back of this style of rib, you can see there's a membrane. My finger's actually on the membrane. So in order to get that rub in there, um, one of the good things to do is to go back on the back of that 
and pull that membrane off. And a lot of people, and you can see how thick, how mm -hmm. tight it is. What it does is when it cooks, it causes them to kind of curl up and people, when they cook, don't realize why their ribs are curling up. Another thing you can do is cut, if you can't get this off, mm -hmm. is take and score that with a knife and then that'll kind of break if it up. If you can't get the membrane yeah. off. And even, even if you can, sometimes I like to do it just, just to get that open up more. Okay. So you get more of the rub in. Excuse me, my hands are kind of dirty so I can't touch the, you want to actually, if you want to sprinkle some of the rub, we'll take a chance and hope that it, the taste is right and it's not too spicy. So about that much? Yeah, and it's up to you. I mean, I've, I've done it like I, where I've caked the ribs, and then I've also done it where I haven't put very much on at all, so. I'm gonna follow your lead. Yeah, yeah. I'm in foreign territory. Okay. So that's probably good. So then what you would do is move the membrane, try not to make too big of a mess. It always is messy. No matter what oh, I've done, it right. always gets No those. one's doing real cooking unless the kitchen's messy. Yeah, so and then you would just do, put it like this and um, like So membrane side down. When I, I typically do, okay. yeah. And yeah. you mentioned some foil. Yeah, so I probably should have grabbed that too. Well, so you would always lay it on foil and, and then maybe some liquid smoke in the bottom of it or not? Yeah, Your well, choice. It, it, the next day. Okay. And some people like that extra smoky flavor. Uh -huh. um, but I just make like a foil pack. So yeah, you just take the foil pack here, or the foil, and take it like And that. you don't need to double it, right? Well, it's not Sometimes, big enough, yeah. so yeah, so I will. So if you want to grab another one out for me. And what about, you know, here you, since I know you probably grill a lot, um, your opinion on the regular foil or the grill foil? Have you used the grill foil? No. I kind of like it, actually. Really, is it yeah. just thicker and? It's stronger. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I guess you would have to use, you would use half as much if you did that, so. Yeah, so anyways, just like that, and you can leave it in there overnight. And then Perfect. now you just have it on a cookie sheet. When you're ready to throw it in the oven, just throw it in the oven. It takes about, um, I've done it, it depends on the temp that you put it at. Mm -hmm. uh, at 250, they're usually done in about four, four and a half hours. Okay. Um, and that's falling off the bone. Now some people like a little pull to them and tear. So do it at 225 about that long, okay. about four or five hours. And cool. you'll know, and, and the thing is, is you can, you can kind of test and pull with the fork to see how the, the doneness of them. Um, a lot of people are afraid because there was all this, there used to be all this talk of underdone pork, underdone pork, right. but it's been a long time since there's been trichinosis in pork, so <laughs> you can actually, but you'll be Fantastic. okay. Fantastic, I'll get this out of the way. Now this, believe it or not, this is the other thing, my source of curiosity is, these potato plazers. Yeah. I gotta know how we're gonna do that. First, I have a feeling we're gonna need a cutting board. Yeah. And I have a feeling. We're gonna need to peel potatoes. Yeah, that's why I brought this one. I like this one. So, yeah. But there's two kinds of potatoes, and I, I didn't, on your grocery list, you didn't specify, so I figured better err mm -hmm. on the side of caution. Right. Would you use bakers, or would you use regular russets? Um, you just want medium-sized potatoes, okay. so, yeah. So if there's mediums in here, these will be just They'll fine. They'll be just fine. And you said eight potatoes. Yeah, that's just what the recipe said. So remember, I, I, my wife usually does it. And you know, another thing that I, I came to the conclusion of last night after we were cooking it, and after I did this, I go, this seems like a lot of work. Because what you do is you take the potatoes, you um, peel them, and then you put them in a pot of boiling water, or you boil them for a while. Mm -hmm. But you only boil until they're about tender so you can still grate them. And I said, well, all that work, why don't we just buy hash browns? She goes, well, you totally could. Well, that would have been nice to know because then I wouldn't have had to peel potatoes. <laughs> well, in, for our case today, well, let's open this bag and see if there's any larger ones. I know that I have to pe if I have to peel a potato, I prefer the larger ones because there's yeah. nothing more annoying than yeah. having a potato, say, like that oh, and okay. having to grate it. A knuckle potato where you exactly. grate your knuckle as you're grating the potato. Exactly. And this bag... Um, it's full of those, probably. Yeah, it, it really is. There's a lot of... Okay. There's a lot of small ones, so let's yeah. stick with those. Absolutely. Right. Probably the best way to do it is, should rinse them off probably, huh? But we're just Your going. choice, I mean, they're gonna go in boiling water. I yeah. personally, you know, there's probably some chefs out there that would say, oh, no, no, you should rinse them, you should rinse them, shame on you. But you know what, they're gonna go in boiling water. Right. Try to keep somewhat of a, it not being messy. This is probably the boring part, you know, this is, that was the other thing my wife asked me too when 
I was uh, getting ready for this. She goes, well, you're not gonna have a pan already done? And I go, what are you talking about? And she goes, well, you know, on the Food Network, they always have that magic pot already <laughs> done. And I go, well, this isn't the, it, I'm just cooking. So we wanna show that it's easy. <laughs> exactly. So I said, I'll do the ribs, how about that? Do you need another potato or a peeler? peeler? Yeah. Where would I find it? <laughs> Probably. We don't know? <laughs> yeah, that top right drawer over there. Is what we're hoping. You mean firemen don't peel a lot of potatoes typically? No, well, not no. In fact, I think uh, there was a big old skirmish a while back because somebody didn't replace, oh no, that was the can opener. We open a lot of cans. We've got to keep things simple around here. We don't have a lot of time to, uh, to cook. So sometimes we have a lot of time to cook. Most well, let's talk, you know, tourist season is right around the corner. Let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that while we're um, peeling potatoes because, right. you know, you don't have a whole lot of time to cook here at, at the fire station because you never know when you're going to be out on a call or called for an emergency. How many calls a day on average do you guys go to um, um, during the tourist season? Yeah, so normally we run about 1,500, 1,600 calls a year mm -hmm. and the majority of that does come during the summertime. However, Right now we're already up to about 500 call or over 500 calls and it's only the end of April. So we're wow. kind of ahead of schedule. But typically I would say on average, we at least go to a cruise ship once a day through the, through the every entire- Every single cruise ship that is in port. Not every, not every one, but every time there's a cruise ship in port, we typically um, will go to at least one. If there's four or five cruise ships, Sometimes we'll go to two or three. Has um, there ever been a cruise ship fire? Yeah, there was. And I wasn't around for it, so I wouldn't have all the information. But, well, there was, wasn't that the uh, Carnival Triumph or that one that, that's where they lost? Not, it wasn't here, you know, it was in the Gulf of Mexico, I believe is where they were. Well, I meant here in Ketchikan. There wasn't a cruise ship fire, there was a ferry fire. Uh, the Malaspina. Really? A few years back. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But it was a, it was in dry dock, so it wasn't. Um, I believe the Columbia. See, now you're you're testing me on trivia, so I'm gonna. <laughs> you're gonna have. That's what you're gonna have people calling in. They're gonna say, well, thanks for showing me the foil pack, but Jeff didn't really know much about trivia and living here. <laughs> fire. fire trivia. <laughs> yeah, and he's a fireman. Thanks. So what? I mean, where is what is the typical cruise ship uh, incident? Is it uh, is it like falling on the dock or? Just pre-existing medical conditions. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a bucket list for a lot of people to come to, is to come to Alaska. So um, I'll probably get in trouble for saying it, but a lot of people that are on cruise ships, we say, are the nearly newlyweds and nearly deads. So oh my, <laughs> there's a lot of old people, which isn't bad. I mean, but um, that yeah, that have previous medical conditions, um, lots of chest pain. Mm -hmm. They don't want to get out in the middle of the ocean and have somebody have chest pain all of a sudden, and then now they have to perform CPR on something on the patient. So if somebody, if they think, suspect that the patient's actually having something going on, they'll, they get, they get rid of them pretty quick. Not get rid of them, but, you know, I, what I've learned from that is to make sure you have travel insurance. Um, Cause we, you know, there was one patient at one time that came up and, He'd saved up most of his life to come up. Well, not most of his life, but oh, for a long most time. of his retired life, yeah, to come up and, and visit here. And this was his first stop and started to experience chest pain and had to be flown out. And so I don't know if he's going to be able to make it back up here, unfortunately. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. So, but, yeah, this is a, like I said, this is a bucket list for a lot of people. And the best way to, for them to see it is, of course, on the cruise ships because they get to see so much more of it than if they were just to pick one town. Mm -hmm. so. so back to potatoes for a second. So we, I chose the big potatoes mm -hmm. um, just because they're easier to peel, but we have to boil them. Yeah. So would you cut these in half? Mm -mm. No? No, because um, with uh, when they're boiling or whatever, you want to be able to hold them because we're going to grate them at the end. Okay. So we don't... It, if we weren't making mashed potatoes, then you would boil them because okay. it would go quicker and everything. Now these We're ones just you softening just them. Yeah, just softening them up for about a half an but hour. But again, so. the easy way that you could do this, same dish, is just by pulling out a bag of hash browns. 
would have been the quickest way. Okay. And like that I said, that would have been exciting on TV. Yeah. Had I had I known and had I done this before, and not just had we probably should have had my wife doing the celebrity <laughs> chef. She does the. I could have done I mean, the. She's already she cooking another, today at yeah, your family's restaurant. Absolutely. Harvard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We put excellent. her to work all the time. So. All right. I'll dump this out, and we'll get those boiling. For all the viewers out there who are experienced potato boilers, yes. <laughs> Jeff and I are wondering why these potatoes I don't know are if it's the water to potato ratio. Way more done, yeah, way more done than these. Maybe it's the type of pan too. There you are. Because they're on exactly the same level of heat. Hmm. Yeah, they're both on high. Yep. Actually, this one's even lower. Huh. There is no telling. I would say another another five minutes or so. Okay. It's just. Oh my gosh! Look at that. Break it in part. I mean, it used to be stuck together. Yeah, I get a lot of crap about whenever a cheese grater comes up because I. I mean, da seriously, Davey how do you all use this? We do. We make do. We need a budget authority spending request. We for finally, we, one new cheese grater for the fire station. <laughs> we were finally able to uh, get some knives and, and some uh, Holy hot smokes. pads. Otherwise, I would have been just using a towel. But yeah, the. Uh, <laughs> That's really bad. One of the. When I first got hired, Davey was talking or grating cheese at the other station, and for some reason I wasn't paying attention, and he was complaining about it. And I said something like, you got to turn it around. And he turned around and said, did you just tell me how to use a cheese grater? <laughs> so they call, any time that they're going to use the cheese grater, they make fun of me and say they're going to call me up for a lesson. <laughs> you got a lot of green onions. Yes, indeed, we do. OK, so one bunch of green onions, right? Yeah, you don't even do, yeah. Or to taste. Yeah, because my mom doesn't even put them in. Really? Yeah, and I said, why does it say green onions in the recipe and you never put them in? I like green onions. Because I just never have, so. That was one of the things I make Liz go to the, buy the recipe. Now, are you the type um, that, you know, green onions are different for everyone? Do you, the whole thing? Mm -hmm. I do. Okay. Interesting. So you've got. It's real fine, yeah. You don't have to do it, I can do it. Oh, there's no worries. You could probably use more green onions, though, if you wanted, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, if you wanted to use more or use less, for sure. And then I guess if you were really gonna be uh, processed food, if you're gonna go ahead and use the uh, frozen hash browns, why not just go ahead and use uh, dried minced onions? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> do whatever you want. <laughs> It'll be the bachelor. Yeah. Potato pleaser. Exactly. Well, that's the thing. You can always make these up ahead of time. Mm-hmm. So just put but them But this would be a good potluck dish mm -hmm. to take. We'll make them and then throw them in the freezer and then thaw them out and cook them. Oh, nice. Making a mess, as Sorry. always. Is that fine enough for you? It's just fine. <laughs> so. Okay, so we... let's see how you're doing that. So it's just straight. And it's really hot. Is it? Oh, yeah, it's awesome. It's like really burning my hand. <laughs> like, oh, my seriously. goodness. So we'll, uh, maybe we'll try this. <laughs> Michelle's going to come over here and not have to use anything. Like, what are you talking about? It's not hot at all. <laughs> we'll see if my grater even works. It I may know, not see? Even work. Bring stuff from home. Make sure I've got it in the right direction. <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're essentially just making hash browns right now, so we could have saved the burning of the hands and me looking like a fool just by getting... See, look at you. You're, this isn't hot at all, Jeff. I don't know what you're talking about. Homemade hash browns. Yeah. They're just bottom. So in, in some ways then this is actually 
I might actually tend to use the, the big baker, baker potatoes for this. Easier to grate. Grab. Yeah. Um, easier to peel. And you almost want, you want it to be like kind of the consistency of a pear, I guess would be the best way to describe it. So it's got a little oh, bit yeah, of... Oh, great analogy. I think I just got a hotter potato than yours. I might have got it in the other, the smaller or the hotter, bigger pan where mm -hmm. there were the hotter potatoes because of the water to potato ratio again. So, yeah, that's essentially what it looks like is just hash yeah. browns. Very cool. Now we gotta burn our hands on six more. <laughs> or at least burn my hands, you're just, you're fine. I should have got there. gloves. Like, like I told you, the oyster shucking gloves. How yeah. are you grabbing cooler potatoes? I'm not. My potatoes are a lot hotter than yours. <laughs> it's serious. This is this one is a little warm. Just, wow, he can go in and fight fires, but he can't hold a hot potato, huh? All right. <laughs> So explain to me the relationship, um, just I mean from an operational standpoint, mm -hmm. of when when someone says that you do you're going on a mutual aid call, say mm -hmm. the South Tongass, North Tongass, what what causes something to be mutual aid? I mean obviously it's someone's decision, but is there kind of a certain magnitude of the of the emergency? Um, anytime you just need that extra. So down south, what they what they typically will call, um, like the, you know, you've heard five alarm, four alarm. Mm -hmm. Well, what else? That's kind of what it's. The, probably the easiest analogy to go with is when it gets too big to contain with the people that are on scene or the. So the first alarm, of course, down south is is just the first first in engine, right. and then. They'll, re they'll decide that they need to call more. So they'll call, so that turns into, for us, that's kind of the general alarm. So we send out for all of our people. And then we realize that it's grown beyond the magnitude of what we can manage with what we have on scene. So we start asking for more help. Um, if it's, you know, if it's outside, right past Wolf Point, we no longer have hydrants past there. So we have to call in for tankers. Or tenders, I'm sorry. You know, you, down south you call in for a tanker and we're going to get a big airplane full of, full of uh, water to dump on the fire. So depending on where you go in the country is where they're called. So, so you can call mutual aid on a car accident. So say you have multiple um, injuries and you just realize that you're not going to be able to fit everybody inside of, your, inside of the ambulance that you have. So you just call mutual aid. So... Um, just asking for more more assistance. Somebody from outside of your district, or you just need that extra hand. Okay. So, so for example, the the big fire downtown recently. Mm hmm. Um, you called it the Moran fire. I believe so. Yeah. Well. But it wasn't actually the Moran house. No. It was the next door neighbor. Uh, but it that was a very large fire, and so that was mutual aid, correct? Yeah, I believe so. I was. I happened to be. That was when I was in. Oh, no, I wasn't in Thailand that time. I happened to be out of town for vacation. But yeah, that they. Uh, I believe they called mutual aid on that fire. It's just, you know, when you have something that big, you know, the, the place where we live having all these stairs, and we just need that extra personnel sometimes. It's just you realize that some things are just better mitigated with more right. people to help. Well, this one's getting a little warm. Yeah. You're just being nice to me now. No, seriously. So I'm gonna be really interested to see how this all goes together um, based on what I'm seeing here because it, it almost looks like a breakfast casserole. Yeah, I guess so. Um, it'll, or it could be. It could. Well, then once it comes out, you'll... It tastes different than... You know, I wonder what else you could add in here. So, bacon. let's say... Yes, bacon. <laughs> Aha! No, but if you take this out and put some other cream soup in there, I wonder what else you could... You'd probably add sausage. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, 
Tiffany was here earlier, Tiffany Cook, and she was, I was telling her about this recipe. And she has one similar, but it, um, you saute an onion and you use cream of mushroom soup rather than cream of chicken. Oh, okay. So there's plenty of, there's different variations. This was, like I said, my mom has had, we've had this. She had a cookbook that she made, gosh, back in the early 90s. Um, she was part of the Riverside Junior Women's Club in Southern California. And they, <laughs> it's like they, a prerequisite if you're in like junior league or yeah. garden club or something. Like, oh, we're gonna have a cookbook. Yeah, she put. Yeah, they put together this big cookbook, and that this was one of the recipes that was in it. And she used it, and it's ever since then. It's just been one of my favorite things to eat. Probably need a bigger bowl. Look, I gave you the last, the last potato. I grabbed it. Mutual aid. There you are. <laughs> I called you in. Myself. No. <laughs> you burned yourself. I think I did too a little bit. A little hot. tiny bit. Those spuds were a little little hot. Yeah. Okay, so what we've got here, our potatoes are done. We have the cheese, sour cream, Ten butter. Ounces, right? This is one oh no, that's two, two 16 ounces. Mm -hmm. So we need half of that. Okay. So it's just and again I threw everything in the in the uh, pan yesterday when I was making this and my wife said, well, typically I'll melt the butter first, then throw in the sour cream and the cream of chicken and then throw in the cheese to melt it because that's... In the pan, okay. In the pan, yeah. And then you just toss it and mix it up in here with the onions and, um, and then throw it inside of a glass dish and then cover it with the remaining cheese because it's two cups of cheese that, out of the four cups, two cups go in the, the melted mix and then you throw it on top and then throw in your uh, corn flakes. Now, do those need to be crunched up? Yeah, that's why okay. I grabbed this. So, Excellent. So if we want to, what I'll do is I'll start the sauce over here. And I'll crunch up some of these. And I noticed on the back of this uh, cereal box, it says, great dinners start with a great breakfast cereal. And there's actually some pretty groovy recipes on the back that I think I'm going to try. So you are going to do the pan method like your wife told you, right? Yeah. Well, and well, and before, what I did is I just threw everything in there together, and uh, and she goes, you know, typically I'll do it and you know get the butter melted and then add the other I'm stuff so it's that. not all going together. I'm struggling over here. Way of Corn flakes are kicking my butt. And I would say just about, I mean, you could do about three cups and then just you know, put it on the top to, to uh, preference or taste. Mm -hmm. And if you had any leftovers, it's already in a Ziploc, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wonder if you couldn't add any spice to this. Oh, I'm sure you could. And that's one of the great things that, I mean, it's all gonna be towards your preference or... You so, know. no, we were talking about cookbooks earlier. I have a cookbook, uh, Better Homes, be, or Better Good Home. Housekeeper, but Better Homes and Gardens, whichever one. Anyway, it is in its fourth generation in my family. It's 1948. Wow. So, but I have two daughters, so that's that, a problem. Who so do I, you send it? Yeah, is it the... Is it the Good Housekeeping Illustrated Cookbook yes. or something? Yeah, we have that. From it's 1948, like, and it's in like a three-ring binder? Yeah, it's the staple <laughs> of every home growing up. Yeah, the uh, my mother-in-law has taken her own recipes and made her own cookbook, and it's kind of a, she made it for each of her children one, and then now it's it's become one of those things that close family friends are saying, oh, I really want, because some of the recipes in there are just incredible, so. That's one of the good things is I married a woman that can cook. <laughs> Indeed. It was, it was an, a big thing because I like to eat, so it worked out just fine. <laughs> so you've got one can of uh, cream of chicken and then a leveled off cup of sour cream. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. And then we'll take two cups of cheese. And I brought a measuring cup that you can I better play it safe. We've got packaging involved and do it so I don't explode the cheese all over the kitchen. 
It's all right, I'm on tomorrow. Tomorrow's Sunday cleanup, so I'll clean it up. And one cup? Two cups. Two cups. I see various firefighters yeah, those are the drifting guys in, poking their heads in, looking at what we're doing. Uh, I wonder if they know that they're going to eat very well here shortly. Those are the guys from the ambulance that are uh, stationed down at the landing today. Okay, two cups. Dump it in. Go ahead and dump it in. And we'll just melt it. Oh yeah, that looks good. And I can see why using this uh, this way uh, would help with the potatoes because then the potatoes aren't going to lose their consistency. Right. And you know, the, the, sometimes you make them, if you, let, if you let the potatoes go too long, then they actually turn into kind of like a mashed potato in there. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, like you said, just different things you could add. You could probably add ham if you wanted to, or um, bacon, or bacon would be the preference. Do you have a porkapalooza coming up, or bacon? A porkalypse. Porkalypse. Porkapalooza. <laughs> <laughs> now you mentioned that you're going to want a larger bowl. Well, we might be able to make do. Okay. So I don't know if we have. We have to... Little nonstick spray. Clean Always up helps in the here. dishwashing process. Yeah. So we'll mix up the onions first with the, okay. we might have too many potatoes for the amount of cheese. Those are large potatoes, so. mm -hmm. But we'll make it work. And I'll go grab a big spoon. Or do you want to use that one? Yeah, we just use this one. It's all gonna get mixed up in here. <laughs> I do want a bigger bowl, don't I? <laughs> There you go. S split it in half. And then well, put it actually, back. that might be a good idea. To take some of the potatoes out. Oh, no, we took the. Because you still have a good portion of the onion. See this? This is why I bought extra onions, onions. in case we needed them. There you go. Okay, we'll get some of those okay. back. Save them. Got a few strays over here. I'll throw in there. There you go. Nice. Yeah, it's a, we'll grab these onions right there. We'll call it good. Like I said, my, my mom never made it with onions anyway, so. Ready to uh, start? Yeah, just go ahead and throw that in there. Hold on, let me do it this way. Oh, let me yeah. just get it all over you. It's all right. <laughs> Everybody at home can see, but I can't, so <laughs> we're good. Looks like it's getting harder to stir. And then we're gonna put cheese on top, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, so it's, yeah. And we don't need any salt or any pepper or anything like that. No, and I yeah. think it's because of the sodium that's, or the salt and stuff that's inside of the chicken, the cream of chicken mm -hmm. soup seems to usually be. They need to make cream of bacon soup. That would go good in there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Save you for I wonder why they don't. I know. See, that's a million, million dollar idea. Send it to Campbell's or make your own. Cream of bacon soup? So, yeah. Maybe that will be my entry for the apocalypse. See? And Cream then you of can, bacon soup shots. Yeah, we were talking about the uh, the pressure cooker. I mean, you could you could jar it up and save it for whatever you needed. Cream of bacon. OK, awesome. You're getting a workout. Yeah. There you Smells good. Now, what are we going to bake this at? 350 for 30 minutes. Just basically, everything's already cooked. Mm -hmm. Just to warm um, it up, right? Just to warm it up and melt everything and incorporate everything. Cool. All right, and you've got almost enough left for another mini casserole. Yeah. So then, 
two cups of cheese on the top. And you, you do you have to measure it? You could just sprinkle. You could probably sprinkle. And are we when we bake this? Are we going to foil the top? Mm -mm. I no? never do. Okay. No, just let it melt and. And this is certainly um, your favorite low calorie recipe, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then the oh, okay, Cornflakes. and then on top of that, okay. See, and that's very cool. And then that's that's the difference because my <laughs> wife, she usually doesn't use cornflakes, so really? if you didn't want to, and I was like, but it says on the recipe, and she tasted it yesterday. She goes, well, that that does add something. So I think she's going to continue to use cornflakes now. But cornflakes is like one of those foods that just is so versatile. Mm-hmm. Well, that yeah, because it adds like well, it doesn't get too much of a crunch, but mm -hmm. it adds another layer. So yeah, then you just pop this in the oven for Very nice. 30 minutes, let it melt, and uh, Perfect. make the mess, and check on the ribs. <clears throat> so I'll pull one out here, so you can see where we, where we are. Ooh, those look yummy. Yeah, I'd say they're pretty much done. So at this point, they'll stay pretty warm in here. Um, I don't know if they would stay 30 minutes warm, meaning the entire time that that's got to cook, but they'll definitely be, they'll stay warm enough. And turn off the oven. Or you could turn it down, you know, if you wanted to wait a while. Or just turn the oven off and let them Let them sit in there. And it's kind of, you don't want to poke too much at them. Here, you want to. It's like letting the steak rest. So, but yeah, if you, you get that consistency to where they just kind of pull apart. We'll just cover it back up. And wait on our potatoes. Wait on the potatoes. Yeah. There's seeds at the come. bottom. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna come right. Sweet. Look at that. So it won't look like restaurant quality, but it'll taste like it. Just a matter of melting the stuff that. Kind of more yeah. Kind of with the cornflakes have a little bit more. He <laughs> didn't hesitate. <laughs> He's just like all over him. It's hot. Yeah. Don't burn yourself. Mm. Nice. They're okay? Yeah, nice and tender. What if they're not good, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> if they're not good, just... Ironically enough, we've never had anyone say on the Celebrity <laughs> Chef show, oh my God, this is awful. This is horrible, what are you doing? Are you trying to poison me or it's what? Hot. It needs ketchup. Oh, thanks. It'll be like, uh, what's it, Gordon Ramsay? Huh? Yeah. <clears throat> they're hot though. They're Spicy hot? No, <laughs> heat hot. Yeah, they just came out of the oven, so I'll, I'll pull the that. other ones out. You don't burn it yourself just for the sake of camera. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. They're delicious. Come here, Cap. You gotta try it, man. You're here. Is it like the dry rub stuff? Is that what it is? No, it's, it's they're just hot heat, not spicy. Oh, that's good. See? Then you can oh, make no. it in the oven. You don't have to worry about being on the grill. Although, half the fun is being on the grill. Yeah. That is. <laughs> okay, this is pretty amazing. No, not at all. All right. We'll go ahead and call these two. Again, they're going to be pretty hot, so. Oh, you filmed the dirty, dirty sink. <laughs> they left the scraps for you. Yeah, nice guy. <laughs> and they're, they're still over there like vultures waiting to see course two. So on these, 
If you let them go a little bit, the, the potatoes might not <laughs> they be can completely. Swoop in again. Um, yeah, well, we pulled it early because. Prior engagements? No. <laughs> okay. So. Let's see if they're really hot. I think they'll be okay, though. Yeah, I think we're gonna be good. You'd usually let them set up as well when you pull them out of the oven, just so mm. they. Uh, Those are good. Tender enough. I like enough. the onion in there. Yeah, mm. see, and that's. That's really good. Once it's, I have it's it. It's nice and fresh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yummy, yummy. Look, I can't stay away from these. These are so good. Told you, then that's the thing. It's, it's the comfort food. Mm -hmm. Going home and... Indeed. Well, thanks for having us. This is really cool. This is awesome. Again. Yeah. And um, you know when Jacob the camera dude is sitting there waiting anxiously <laughs> so he can flee the building with his to-go container as we head out to the softball games. Um, yeah. We did something Home right. Home run. Good job. All right. Thank you. All right. Can't wait to come back. And thanks for watching. You need one of the um, oyster shucker gloves to protect your hand. Or just man hands. Like, oh, sorry, that's probably not the right way to say it. Not be, not whine about it. But that wouldn't matter who. Tough hands, I guess. Because <laughs> I actually know women that are tougher than men, so it has nothing to do with. I'm just digging a hole for myself. <laughs> 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 Stop. Hey, you did real good till the end there, Jeff. <laughs> I really enjoyed the bloopers at the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs>